Dr. Lana Staley. I coach on relationships and life strategies, and I'm here with Chat with Women to talk about what it means to be your personal best. In the last segment, we talked about getting endorphins so that you have the energy to think clearly and move forward through life in a way that's happy and meaningful. So what we did is I looked at the research on what, what, what do we think good people are, and I looked at the research in the uh, spiritual literature and the psychological literature and the business literature, and they came up with basically the same things. And those elements are self-awareness, a sense of connection with others, joy in daily life, and altruism. So what that means is self-acceptance is self-knowledge. Who am I? What do I believe? What do I think about? What do I value? What's important to me? How do other people see me? And you start getting information of, of really just who as a whole person am I? And this is especially important as we're doing a transformation in personal growth. You have to know who am I? Because over time in routines we kind of slip into patterns that really aren't our personal best. You know, we just sort of coast and coasting only works going downhill. So we have to keep looking at how can I be a better person? So we can make sure that we do things that enhance our self-awareness. And on our Bounce website, we have a little self-test you can take on what it means to be your personal best and what it means to have self-acceptance. The second element for being your personal best is a sense of connection with other people. Now this doesn't mean a cast of thousands. This means two, three, four friends that you're really intimate with, that you look out for them and they look out for you. And it's a deeper, genuine interest. It's wanting to know who are you really and what are you thinking and how are you feeling and to have a genuine connection. We have to have that with people in our lives to be our personal best. We have to care about other people. The third is joy in everyday life. Now we used to think the Big Bang Theory is you know you really work hard and you save up and someday you get the prize. Turns out not to be true. The prize just is never big enough for all you went through for all those years to make up for it. So it's way better to find joy in everyday life. And that's as simple as singing in the shower. It's as simple as just going for a walk and thinking about how pretty the day is. Finding joy in everyday life, telling, friend a, telling a friend a story and laughing together. These are daily joys, but it's looking for these things. Because whatever we look for is what we find. So if you're going to look for bad things, you find bad things. If you're going to look for good things, you find good things. And joy is the only endorphin producer. So you must have joy every single day. Number four is really interesting and it was surprising to me because it's about altruism. And altruism means going beyond yourself for the well-being of another. It means having a bigger picture of the world. It means taking what your abilities are and putting them out there. And it can be as simple as helping a neighbor. It can be as simple as volunteering at a charity. But it has to be something that it's not about you. It's not about what you get from this. It's about what you give. That That is the reward. And it's having the perspective of the world. So whether it's recycling, whether it's donating to the crisis in Japan, we have to be out in a world that's bigger than us. And one of the benefits of that is it lets the little trivia of life kind of roll off. You know, if somebody's rude or abrupt or late or whatever, you can get all annoyed and bent out of shape. Or you can think, look, this the world's a big place. One of my favorite inner slogans is, it's not world peace. So, you know, there's not a lot to get upset about. World peace I get upset about. But this I'm not going to get upset about. It really just helps you put things in perspective and know that where you are in life is where you should be. And we had a couple of examples in our bounce circles. And one of them was a woman whose marriage was a little on the tippy side. Uh, they'd been married since they were 20, and I think they were both 40 now. And um, so she really wanted to change their marriage. And out of the group, 
what she did is that his, the whole marriage and my whole life has been about him. I want it to be about me. So she went home and told him she wanted to do some things in the community, that she wanted to have her own garden, and that she wanted to spend more time with her girlfriends and less time on their motorbike. He said, great. And she's like, what? And their marriage turned around. He said, this is cool. I can do some things I haven't done before. We can do this. And that's been about two years ago. They're just ecstatic. And that's all it took. It took knowing herself. It took making some different changes. It was about stretching. It was about going beyond. And in making herself better, she made her marriage better. And she made the people around her better. Another person hated her job. She was a lawyer. She was going to quit. And she decided, as she did her inventory, that her real passion was art. So she decided that she was going to take an hour a day to do her art. And so she just did some doodling and diddling. And, but then as she did it, she started thinking, you know, really, it's not my work I hate. It's all the obligations I have. So she started pruning. She quit a couple of groups she was in. She stopped her book group. She decided she really loved working in her garden. She tore out about half her garden so new things could grow. And in that, her whole life started to grow. She started really thinking about what she did and didn't want to do, who she did and didn't want to spend time with. And she started pruning. And so as she pruned, she decided there was a particular kind of law that she wanted to practice that would benefit women. And so instead of changing careers, she really was able to expand out, use the skills she had to make the world a better place and to make her life richer and better. And sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to cut out what is or people who are there so that we can make room for being new and being renewed. So that's all for this segment. So on our next segment, I'll be talking about what we need to do for the mind and body and to be our personal best and to move forward in life. And that'll be our next segment on Chat with Women.